Welcome everybody to our Tuesday session for Sectors Made Simple. Typically, our Tuesday classes are meant for members only, which means that you need to have purchased a subscription for Sectors Made Simple in order to join these classes. But because of our awesome announcement today, we wanted to have everybody in on this session so that they could hear the great news, as well as hear from Julie Stav, or my mother, about how she uses the matrix and how you can also learn from how we use it to make yourself and your own investments that much simpler. So welcome mom, I am very happy to be able to have this conversation with you and I'm excited to hear what you have to share. But before we get to that, I want to share the big announcement. So when we created the matrix, it was our goal to have all of the information that you would need to do sector investments all in one place. And something that we were always missing is bullish percent indexes or a way to know how many stocks in an index or a sector are currently on a buy signal compared to those in a sell signal. And we are happy to announce that starting yesterday, we now have bullish percent right into the matrix, where if you look at the matrix, you can see right over here a big BPI table that will give you the BPI percentage, which is the number of stocks in that index on a buy signal, as well as the current point and figure column that it is in. So if you see a column of X's, that means that it is in a column of X's, and if you see an O, that means it's in a column of O's. Not only that, on the left-hand side where you see BPI charts, if you click on that, you now get a list of all of the BPI charts. So if you click, let's see Excel, ah, let's see XLE, shall we? Yeah. If you click on view XLE and scroll down, you now have the BPI point and figure chart for XLE right in the matrix. So we wanted to share all of this with you and to help us show how this information can be used. Mom, take it away. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, first of all, I have to tell you that at the beginning, this was very confusing to me. I am, I'm a first grade teacher. I like things simple when I saw all of this. And I was in the labor room when this program was created. Little by little, I saw it taking form. I, I cooperated with uh, Nate and with Jonathan in the creation of the program from the um, perspective of of investment and you know bringing in my experience and I saw what they had created and I thought wow this is you know this is amazing but if you saw it being born little by little that was one thing but to be hit with all of this at one time I thought whoa we're gonna have to really do a lot of explaining because there is so much information there is so much work and I know Jonathan that you did a seminar last Friday where you taught how you showed how to create a matrix how to go from a point and figure chart creating the X count and creating the positive trend whether it's in a buy signal or a sell signal so those of you that really like pain you can do this by hand the problem is is that you have to do it 13 times every day and then you have to keep all of those so that you can then go back and compare it, something that you can just do here by hitting, um, um, by hitting a little X and saying what period you want to see. I tend to do, and, and my girasol is, uh, I'm gonna miss you, I'm already missing you, tomorrow's our last class, but I, you know that I am a, I'm a hare. I'm hare, H-A-R-E. I'm a, a rabbit. I do things kind of fast, but not as fast as Meli. She is the colibri. She is the hummingbird. She is, Meli's not a day trader, but Meli has been known to buy and sell the same day if the, yes, you are going to receive the recorded after and it is going to have also uh, the the Spanish uh, subtitles underneath. 
But anyways, Melly does it very short term. Mine is I'm looking, she holds it for hours or days. I tend to hold it, to hold a, a stop from days to maybe a few weeks. And then there's those that like to hold it weeks to months or months to years. I, I look, I'm 67 years old, okay? I, I don't have time to waste. So I like to do things, especially with the kind of market we're having right now, things happen really fast. One way investing in, in sectors is that you don't have to hit that, that target right in the, in the bullseye. You can identify the strongest sector, and why should you? Very simply, because 80% of a stock's move is due to its sector. So why? Doesn't it make sense that we would find out how the sector is doing? If you could, before you walked anywhere, you could increase your chances of making money by 80%, even before you choose one investment, wouldn't you want to have that wind on your back? I would. So by identifying the sector, and this is part of the Be a Profit that I wrote, Get Your Share, Obtenga Su Porción, I wrote that New York Times bestseller, which is still a standard for investment. One section is that you begin to look at what the market is doing, then you see what the sector is doing because stocks tend to move in groups. So how I use this matrix is every two weeks. And what I did is I did a, a, a little study of my own where I started March 1st and ended yesterday, which was August 10th. It should have been today, August 11th, because every two weeks it would have been today. But the interesting part about what happened in my investments is that the whole month of March, it showed me that there was nothing to invest in. It showed me that I shouldn't be investing at all. From then on, it told me which one was the leading sector every two weeks. I only looked at it every two weeks. I didn't look at it every day, every week, every two weeks. I have too much going on in other things. I said my sectors, you know, I do look at my stocks every day. I follow those every day, but the sectors, I thought I'm going to give you two weeks. Well, it told me except the middle of June, it also had me, it didn't show me that there were any leading sectors during that time. The results were over 40% while the stock market, the spider, had around three to 4% return during the same time. So I am thrilled that Jonathan is doing this because it's saving me a lot of time before I used to go to stock charts, I would go to sector summary, I would hit it, and then start looking at each one of the industries, each one, and Melly has said it, you know, for $10 a week, she saves herself two or three hours of work every week. So Jonathan, thank you, this is awesome, and I'm glad, I'm a, I'm a Freddie freeloader with this program. I gave birth to you, okay? Remember that. Just remember that when you're That's thinking about charging me. That's a pretty long-term valuable investment. <laughs> okay. So I may be biased, I, though. I, and, and let me tell you how I do it. If I could just take, and I'm going to do this really fast, if I may, Jonathan, I'm going to kick you out. Is that okay? Please do. Goodbye. Okay. And I'm going to go into the same thing, but now I'm, this is my uh, screen now. And what I'm showing is today's matrix, and I am going to show it compared to two weeks ago. Once I do compare to two weeks ago, the first thing I do is I go into today's matrix and I put all of my little ducks in a row with the X count. Because I'm a wild old lady, you know, kind of like Tina Turner or Celia Cruz type, I do not look at the positive trend. I look at the X count. I want action now. Now, as soon as I do that and the, the right side I again do it, I julicize it. Because for me, it's a lot easier. Why do you think newspapers are done in very narrow columns? Because for us as human beings, it's a lot easier to read up down or in very narrow areas rather than to read from side to side. So for me, in my first grade little Cuban mind, it's easier to read from up down. But now I have to reverse the rules. So I want a column that has 
as many red boxes as I can. Right away, I'm getting a little peek here that XLI or industrials is giving me that. Look at this, not one even pink. How about this one here, which is uh, discretionary? Well, two pinks, but no greens. So what I look at is who has the red in a vertical way, and those are the leaders. Because if you look at XLI now, like normal people do, from the left to the right, you're going to see that you have a lot of green saying, and it also has the highest number of X count. So now I'm going to make a note of all of the X counts that have a count of four or higher. So in this case, it would be XLP, and then I write it, Alantiguita, okay? I don't take an Excel, I don't take, I take my pen, and I take a paper, sometimes I lose the paper, but I write XLP, XLF, XLC, XLY, XLB, everybody that has four or more X count in the column of Xs, XL, B, XLE, SPY, and XLI. Now I go down and I look at where it was two weeks ago and what has happened in between. And again, I put all my little ducks in a row from best news to worst news. And the worst news I don't even look at because that's the riffraff stuff that I, that's the bottom of the barrel. That's the stuff in the alley in the trash can. I'm not going to look at that. So I want to see who has increased the most. And I'm going to now look for the ones that have two or more in this change from two weeks ago. In this case, it's XLF. Well, guess what? I don't have XLF in my list. Okay, go to the next. XLC, I, there it is. I circle it. SPY, I circle it. And who else? XLY, which is discretionary, I circle it. Wow, today there's a lot. There's definitely a rotation going on on XLC. I have an XLE, which is okay. See, my XLI lost one X along the way. So it just got thrown out. That means that all of a sudden, energy hit it big, didn't it? because it made the biggest change between two weeks and now. In the kind of atmosphere that we are, it is right now when there's being a sector rotation. When you see that one day one sector is up and then the next day it's another one, what do you do? Do you buy and sell every day? No, you don't. But you look at what is going on and you start looking at, you know how you make popcorn and at the beginning, one, or two are going to start popping up, and then you're waiting there like the cat waiting for the mouse to come out of the wall. And then all of a sudden, the next one and the next one and the next one, before you know it, you better put a lid on it because you're gonna lose your popcorn. The same thing happens with stocks. When there is a sector that is really starting to show leadership, the first thing you're going to do between that, inside that sector is you're going to start seeing stocks that are going to be the first popcorns to pop. And usually the first popcorns to pop are the strongest popcorns in the whole pot. Okay? So what I do once, am I extending myself too much, Jonathan? No, keep going, no, it says, are you Okay, no. so then once I see that XLE was really hot, and this is what Melly did, she went into, she went into just stockcharts.com, okay? I would go into chart mail, but she likes to go into, into this. She goes into charts and tools, and then I'm going to look at sector summary. I know that I'm looking for industrial sector, no, excuse me, energy sector. So I'm going to hit on that. And now there is my list of industries inside that sector. And in there, she found the company that she bought 
today, which gave a triple top breakout, and that company was what was CXO. it? CXO. CXO. And I'm going to look at the point and figure down here. I pay for the service of stock charts mainly because I don't want you to have to deal with um, commercials and things. So I'm going to again go here, go to point and figure, CXO. And it's Concho Resources. And if you look at it, it broke today a 3x, a three top breakout, and the buy price was $55. Now, um, as Jonathan was mentioning earlier, tomorrow is going to show it ended up at 52.94, so it did kind of a reversal. So tomorrow it's going to have one, two, three, four O's here. Or it's going to, you know, just take off and we'll see what happens. But we have to wait until tomorrow and see what that happens. But what that showed me was that when I look at sectors and I and I look at them more often than every two weeks, I don't necessarily invest in the sectors. I invest, which I did for my experiment, I did, but I invest, I look for stocks that are hot. We have had COVID move stocks up to now. Zoom and I had a four month love affair that was awesome it was time to say goodbye goodbye zoom thank you very much because now all of those companies like zoom like zillow like uh i don't know all of those uh corona plays have fallen out of grace and it's really companies that are more in the value category or in other uh, sectors that are being the leaders so that's so it Something that you do that's very interesting is you don't just look at the matrix. You try and find stocks within the leading sectors and invest in those instead or in addition. So my question is this. When you look at the matrix, how do you decide if you want to invest in the sector ETF itself or if you want to be looking at stocks within it? Is there any sort of information you look at to decide to invest in sectors as opposed to companies? Or how do you decide where to put your money in that regard? What I normally do is I, I want the leader. I don't care if it's a sector, I don't care if it's a stock. So what I do usually is I go again to my trusty little uh, chart. I have my charts done in a way, see if I put my sharp charts, and you're welcome to take a picture of this screen because this screen is, is a classic for me, I always keep it. I have a couple of things here. One is I put the 10 day exponential moving average, the 21 day exponential moving average, and the 50 day simple moving average. And I see where the company, where this, the price of the share is. I never, ever, ever, ever buy a stock that is under the 200 moving average but here i can tell that, that that's not the case but i also look here where i have the company versus the s p 500 the company versus the nasdaq the company versus xle which is the sector and the company versus its industry and i don't have to know what they are if you go to and this is the part i want you to take a picture of because this is how i set up my parameters I, all you have to write here is the same company you write at the top, two dots, and then put the dollar sign SPX, two dots here, and the composite, which is the NASDAQ, and how you open this, you find it in price performance right here, okay? Don't get into windows and things. See the, here, there's, there's a bunch of different, you want price performance. You want the the performance which means whether it went up or down in reference to that what that you're comparing it to so i want to see how this performed versus the s p the nasdaq then you just write the word sector 
and it finds the right sector for that stock. You don't even have to find it out yourself. And you write the word industry, and it finds the right, right industry for yourself. Then I come up here, and what I like to see is this line going up. But I like to see a positive number. In this case, this company has a negative number compared to the S&P, the NASDAQ, the sector, and the industry. So in this case, for me, I, I don't, I wouldn't like, okay, this company because of those, because of those, uh, that, those signals. But for example, if I put the company, let me give you one right now, Spotify. Okay, here's Spotify. Now look at the difference. Now it's beating the S&P 500 by 42% in its performance, by 38% the NASDAQ, by 43% its sector. So why would I invest in the sector if I can do 43% better in a stock? See the difference here? And in the industry, by 43%. So this is what tells me when I look at several stocks and it's showing me that it's beating the sector that it's in. If it happens to be a sector and to find out the sector, what the name is, you go here and you put full quote and you press update. Now you go up and it tells you communication services, internet. So this is the sector and this is the industry. So once you find either a stock, it doesn't matter where you start, I always compare it to the sector, knowing in two seconds which one the leading sector is, and then I decide if I want to invest in the stock or in the sector. In this case, I circled a few of these, and just to give me an idea, what I do, Jonathan, is I put a for example, XLC in communications was one of them that I circled, and XLY, which in this is in discretionary. See, communication services versus discretionary. I like to read this in the language of point and figure. And remember that it's giving me the, the grade for the first symbol that I write in. So here it's telling me how is communications compared to discretionary. Well, I see that it's under the red. <clears throat> That's not good. It's in a column of zeros. As a matter of fact, today it broke a triple zero going down. So XLY is already telling me that it's stronger than communications. And I always like to turn them around. And there it is. XLY discretionary wrote broke a top three, a, a triple top. So by putting one against the other like this, and by showing them in my little sector industry of my sharp charts, I see right away what is stronger, the sector or the stock. And that tells me where my money should go. Does that answer your question? It does, thank you so much. Also. I know that there's a couple of people that have questions uh, from our attendees. If you can, I would ask that you ask your questions. We have a Q&A section. If you put the questions there, I can answer them in a little bit more detail, as well as at the, towards the end of the session, we'll have some time that we can go through and take actual questions from people. But the Q&A section is the best way to make sure that we see your question and get it answered. But thank you so much for that. That is really cool to get to see a way that you don't need to go try and figure out the sector, figure out the industry. You can do it very, very simply. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to take a step back really quick. Mm -hmm. We have looked at the matrix and how you can find a leading sector. Now, I know because, well, you were the one that really pioneered for me the value of bullish percent and how that can be used. What so bullish percent is oftentimes considered to be the risk of a market. Yes. How do you look at that risk and how do you decide when something is too risky or is 
or there is an opportunity there. What, do you, what numbers do you look for or what sort of BPI chart signals do you keep an eye out for? Okay. Also, sorry, that I just want to pause one second because I know there's been a couple of people that have asked this question. So if you can scroll up to the matrix, Mom. Yeah. So the reason that you'll see some dark green, some light green, some pink, and some dark red is all of these boxes right now are set to if it's in a positive trend, which is our long term or our long term trend, it will be green. And if it's in a column of X's, it will be dark green. If we are in a positive trend, but a column of O's, which is a short term downtrend or short term down direction, you'll see a light green. Same thing for the negatives. If you have a negative in a column of O's, or as we like to say here, everyone that has been part of these classes can say it with me, no, no. If we have a big old no, then that is going to be dark red, just as N with a column of X's. So a negative trend in a column of X's will be your pink. So that's why you see some of those colors is it depends on if you're looking at the long term or the long term trend or the short term direction. And it's our goal in a future update to let you choose if you want that green and red to be set by the long-term direction, or sorry, why do I keep doing that? Long-term trend or the short-term direction. Ooh, but like for right that. now, it's set based on the positive or negative trends. So that's why you'll see those colors. But so yeah, back to the question, how do you use BPI mm -hmm. and how do you decide what a good like what is a good BPI to you because that means something different to everybody so I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are well and, and interestingly enough and I, and I applaud that you and Nate have taken just like I showed you know let's say that this is a here right here this is a football field or a soccer field that goes from zero to 100 those are the yards that you have to go. From zero to 30 is, and these are all percentages, we're going to see if we have something there, we're going to see a company, a sector, whatever we're looking at, if it has the X or the zero, if it has it in that area between zero and 30, it's being oversold. That is the green area. That is the area where you have, if you're in Nexus, you have very few of your soldiers in the field. That means you have a lot waiting to back that soldier up. But you're going up, which is great. So whenever you have a company or an, a sector that goes down into Nexus, like for example here, I don't have anybody in the 30s. Too bad. When you see somebody in the 30s and you're going to see that here, this will turn green and you have it in the O's, the minute that that baby turns into X, I want you to take a look at it just so you can confirm it. Remember, always trust, but verify. But once you confirm it that it's reversed within that green, honey, you sell the dog, you break the guinea pig, you go for it because that means that there are very few sellers anymore. They've exhausted almost all the sellers, and now you can get your soldiers to come in and whoosh, begin. You have the ball, and you run with that ball. Conversely, when you have from 100 to 70, so 30 coming from the top, and it's in red, and your X's or your O's are there, it's telling you that the market is over over bought what does that mean that means that you have most of your soldiers already in the battlefield they're tired they're wounded you have very few on reserve to come and relieve these poor tired devils that are already fighting and that means that the other team could be gaining on you because you're getting tired it could stay there for a while but this is a reminder, whenever you see it in red, it's telling you that, hey, you're getting into, you know, you have, uh, you have very few people out there that, that can, are up to fighting your battle. If you see it in X's, it means it's still going up. 
But the minute that it reverses going down, get out. Because just like it happens when it's green and it reverses to X's going up, when it's in red and it reverses from X's to O's, get out. Because you, and this is not 100%, this is more art than science, but play the, the probabilities. This is all probabilities and statistics, and they are in your favor if you do that. So yes, of course I look at where we are here. The best place to be is really well, it's under 30 when it, when it reverses, and then all the way from 30 to let's say 50 or 50 to 60, see there you have it in white territory, which means you, you're pretty even, you're midfield. And it's, it's, it's just a matter of who happens to have the strongest soldiers. And I like to look at the stocks inside a, a sector and see who the, the, the stocks are and what kind of caliber they are. Too long of an explanation? Not at all. A great explanation. So to me, something that you said that means a lot and is very valuable is I always like to look for BPIs that are... Mm -hmm either in a column of O's and I'm waiting to turn into X's or a column of X's below 30%. We consider anything from zero to 30, a BPI of zero to 30% to be oversold. Just like we consider BPIs from 70 to 100 to be overbought. Correct. So looking at our current BPIs, our SPY is the S&P 500 and we have a BPI of 71% in a column of X's. And looking through all of the BPIs that we have, many of them, well, all but two of them are above 60% and every single one is above 50%. I'm curious to see or hear what, that, what does that mean to you when you see the entire market seems to have very, very high BPIs? It means that it's just getting really hot. It's, uh, you know, most you don't want to buy when just about everybody that wanted to buy bought. Okay, you don't want to go to Ross and, and just get the leftovers on the table that are all just, you know, nido de gato. You like to go and have a choice of the best that's available. And that happens when it's a fresh market. This market has been going on hot and heavy since April 6. And what could happen right now, the best thing that could happen to the market is that it starts going sideways for a little while. And it starts kind of cooling off a little bit because that means that it's taking a breath, that it's just not getting overheated. It's letting everybody digest. And in that case, we're going to see what happens. But it's now you see four, see, and this is where if you look at it every day, you don't even have to see the numbers. You see that right now we have four in red. I'm like Meli. She says, it's green, I'm going for it. It's red, I'm selling. Well, here it's red, but I have four of them. If tomorrow I look and I have five or I have six, it's telling me things are getting, hmm, you know, el honor no, no está para galletica. If things are getting really hot. So I'm going to, that means that I'm going to be more cautious, that I'm going to put less money into my investments if I decide to buy. I'm not buying anything right now. I am holding pattern with my stocks because I want to wait and see what happens. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. That's super interesting to get to hear, not just how you look at the matrix, but also to look at what you use in addition to the matrix. We've covered how you start at the matrix and you use these very, very simple things that will mm -hmm. let you find your leading sectors. And then from there, you can take those sectors and find stocks that are leading within those within those, in, or sorry, within those sectors or within mm -hmm. their industries. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to look over, because there's been quite a few questions that have been asked, and some of them are awesome talking points. So I'd love to start moving towards that so we can talk about some of these things together. So one amazing question that somebody had is, when a stock has a triple top breakout, is that a sign that the next day it's going to reverse? So my answer to that is no, it is not. Mm. A stock, the past performance of a stock will not say what it is going to do next. All it does is tell us what it might do. Typically, when you see a triple top breakout, 
that means that the stock has now changed its normal routine. Maybe its normal routine is it wakes up, has its cup of coffee, uh, makes some breakfast, and then leaves to go to work. Well, today it decided to go to the gym instead. So, you know, that's something different. That's something it hasn't done in the past. So that matters to us. But what that means may, may change. That may mean that they now are going to be going to the gym every week and they're going to be getting stronger. Or it could just mean that, you know, they felt like they had one too many donuts the morning before and they just wanted to go to the gym once. So it's this game of we're not really sure what can happen, but all we know is that a triple top breakout is something different than what it usually does. It's a different routine. So it means that we want to be watching it to see what it does. Many investors may buy when they see a triple top breakout, but that's not a promise that the stock is going to continue to go up. All it means is that it's a very important change that we want to be watching for. Do you have anything to add to that? No, I agree. A triple top is usually very good because it took it twice without, having, without surpassing that high, and then the third time it made it. And by then, it has a lot of pressure behind it. But in the kind of market that we're having right now, and I'm kind of glad that this is happening because you are tasting one of the worst markets we have ever had. Okay, since March. I mean, the worst. You have had, it has been, hallelujah, a, I mean, I am very happy with my investments in stocks and sectors since the market turned around on April 6th. And now we're getting kind of a rotation where growth companies are not leading anymore, but it's more value companies that are leading the pack. And by that, I mean growth companies are those Jonathans, okay? Those young, they're full of, you know, hormones, okay? They're the ready to go, they're the Zoom, they are the, uh, the Zillows, they are the, the, the companies that are new, fresh, hungry. The companies that are value are the Julies. They're still going up. They're more your Ebays, your Apple, your Microsoft, your Honeywell, your, you know, those companies that have been around, but they're still kind of Celia Cruz, okay? They're still, they have a lot of, I don't know, say qua inside, but they, they're not done, but they are more long-term players. And we're seeing that value is, is what's in right now. Temporarily, would, at least for now. I would agree with that. Now, the next question I can just answer. Um, Maria is asking, do we have a little reminder about what the meaning of the colors are in the program? Oh, yeah. Yes, we do. So let me show you what that looks like. If you look over at the matrix, down here in the bottom right-hand corner, you see this little question mark. If you click on this, it will bring up a guide to help you remember not only what the colors mean, where you can see the colors here, where it'll tell you what the different columns mean and what long-term strength and short-term weakness show, but also if you want these instructions in Spanish, you can click here where it says view in Spanish and everything is translated. So you can find that information and remember what all these things mean in both English and or Spanish, whatever you'd prefer. Now, moving along, there's a great question here that Mavel has. I've been studying stocks that have given a buy signal, but on the same day, the X is still a buy signal, but the price closes lower. To buy that stock, should I wait for the price to rise more than that price signal? You're asking me? I think yes. so. Yeah, yes. I'll ask you. I like to buy into strength. I don't like to buy into weakness. And when that happens, it's called stalling. So it started the motor, it started going really fast, but for some reason it encountered um, headwind. It could be what is called overhead supply, that there's people that bought it at a higher flat price and were waiting for this to take off so that they could then unload it. It could be many reasons. Don't buy into weakness, buy into strength. 
you want to buy it when that momentum is going up, not when it's retreating. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. Um, let me see here. All righty. Uh, Jose is asking, Julie, can you explain a little bit more about your two-week strategy using the matrix? Yesterday, oh, we okay. saw that XLI was being a leader, and now it's changed to XLE. So do you stay with XLI until you go back and see the matrix in two weeks, or how do you approach that? I would stay with XLI. Um, of course, now I saw XLE, and it's like you can't, um, you know, you can't un beat a drum once it's beaten, but, um, but I am going to stay with my XLI because I, XLI still has a lot of oomph in it, and I, I, I would. I would still stay with my XLI if I'm going to stay true to my, to my system, you know, to my strategy. And something I have to add to that as well is it's great to have a guide. It's great to have a way that you invest because it helps you to stay organized and it helps you to not feel like that you're overwhelmed by all this information. And let your emotions take over. Exactly. At the same time, you are also free. It is your investments and you, can, you don't need to put all your eggs in one basket. You don't need to buy everything into XLI. You can choose to buy XLE as well or sacar un poco de nata y entrarlo en algo. You can take out a little bit of profits and then reinvest it somewhere else. You don't need to just buy one sector. So you can diversify and you can buy different sectors. You can buy companies and a sector. It's your investments and you find what works for you. And that's the most important thing is we will show different ways that we use it. But that's how we use it. The best part about all of this is working together to find the best way that you can use it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. There are a few more questions. I like this one quite a bit. Maida is asking, would it be more favorable to buy in XLF at 50.2% BPI in a column of X's or XLU at 60% when the column of O's that it's currently in becomes X's? Um, the column of O's becoming X's at 60 is too close to 50. So that's a very weak sign. It would have to be really high and really oversold. It would have to definitely be in the red uh, zone for that reversal to ring a bell with me. But you have the answer by going to stock charts and putting those two sectors, two dots in the middle. And that will tell you who the stronger one is. You want to get into strength. You don't want to get into weakness, no matter where they are. And somebody could have strength all the way up and then collapse. Exactly. Now, Al is asking, will the matrix give links to chart mill or stock charts for quick reference while those sites are giving us the proper information? Unfortunately, for, for legal reasons, we are not, we do not, we're not sponsored by them. We do not sponsor them. We mm -hmm. use their information because it's very, very useful. However, we cannot give you access or we can't link over to them without their permission. So we try and provide as much information as we can on our site. And then from there, we will provide webinars such as this, as well as our previous members only webinars, which have discussed how to do how to find leading companies within a sector using Be a Profit, which should be familiar to many of you. So we do cover how we can use Chart Mill or how we use stock charts, but we don't provide links on our website to that, unfortunately. And not only that, but for example, um, I didn't know about Chart Mill until um, Mayra Gonzalez brought it to my attention, and it's because I wanted to have a place where I could do a um, a screener using relative strength and she found it and she found a great screener by the way may i show something thanks for of course idea. okay is let's say that and i gave this out uh during the during, in the past i've given this out but i'm going to go to chart mail and you guys are going to love this let's say that you found that the housing because this happened that the housing, okay, construction was hot. 
And you found that out. I found that out in two seconds in Sectors Made Simple. I went to Chart Mill. This is gold, you guys, what I'm about to give to you right now. Okay? And then I went to Stock Screener here on the left. You need to register. It is free. I don't know how they work. They give you credit. Um, and I don't know how they work their credits. Somehow they haven't taken it away from me. They don't know, they don't know me from Adam, but I still have credit, so I'm still using it for free. But anyways, stock screener. Then I go into here, SIC division. Bingo Yahtzee. This is the sector. And I'm going to put in there, okay, construction. Now I go into performance. Okay, so take a, take a screenshot of this. Construction here, this is the sector. This is the industry. This is the sector. Go into performance and look at this. Chart meal relative strength. That means what is the percentage in performance of that you want to see compared to every single company they have in their database? Well, because I want the best, I want all the companies, and look, I have 72, 74 results here. Now I have two results. That means that Hobnanian and Amiresco have performed better than 95% of the stocks in construction in the past 12 months. Well, I want to see if that's true. Now I'm going to go here and I'm going to write HOV, Hofnanian. And wow, look what it did. It made a little flag, okay? And it took off and the buy price was 27. Now let me look at the other one. The other one is AMRC. I'm going AM. No, M. CMRC, what was it, Jonathan? I've seen your moment. I'm sorry. AMRC, okay. AMRC, all right. Okay, and look where it is. Now the new buy price is 33. Well, I want to see which one of the two is stronger. So now I put them together, separated by two dots so they don't fight. And now remember that I'm getting the signal on, I'm getting the grade on the first one that I wrote in. And it's in green. And that means that it's winning in the short term. Today, it did better than this, the other one. But since I like to just have them hit me over the head with it, I'm going to put HOV dot AM. Was it RC or CR? RC. RC. And now I go down. Now I'm getting the, the grade on HOV. Well, it is obvious that that's not a good grade. So AMRC is stronger than HOV. So if I wanted to invest in construction, because I found that that was the hottest sector at the moment, and I gave you all during the radio show, I gave you all a list of companies that were hot in the construction. This is how I found them. So this is another way that you can use the matrix just to do 80% of your work, if not more. That counts 80% of the chances you have to make money. That will cost you $10 a week, okay, average, to have. And it's up to you how you want to spend your time, but I know how I don't want to spend my time. And this is how I do it. Awesome. And then this is a really good question. Um, what about drips? Do you sell your drips when the BPNYA is above 80% or what is the best way to treat your drips in an overbought market? I can tell you this without having to hear what my mom says that when you buy drips, you're not buying it as a buy and sell, buy and sell kind of investment. You're buying drips because they are long-term performers. They have a history of paying out consistent and increasing dividends. And you are buying them not because they'll make you money today, 
but because they'll continue to give you a little bit of money over time and you know that that money will always be coming in. It's like you kind of just get that paycheck every couple of months and you know that it's going to be good for that. So you're not so much worried about what it's doing today because you're more worried about how much money will it have paid you out 10 years from now. Do you have anything to add to that, Mom? The only thing that I would have to add to that is that when you have a drip, you if you only look at the dividend, you're looking at half of the story. You need to also, and, and today I gave that again on the radio, and I said, okay, look, you, your dividend is what you're doing right now for me. I'm working, I'm, I'm producing, I'm doing. The price of the share is the other part, and that you get over time. That's the Julie. That's the one where it's, it's experience. It is knowledge through time. You want both. So when you are comparing a drip, let's say, to another stock, going to, going to this area of stock charts, going to performance charts, okay? Performance charts is going to include both of them. Let's say that I want to compare XOM, which has a terrific dividend. Now I put Xs, okay? And I want to compare it to Chevron or, whoops, or, or, and I want to compare it to Abbott Laboratories. And I want to say, okay, I'm confused. Which one, which one should I, whoops, should I invest in? Well, Exxon is paying you 7, 8% dividend, but let's find out on a longer. Hello, Abbott Laboratories, that little quiet mouse over time has beaten the rest. And this is from October 19, 2019 to now. By the way, when you go here, click it twice. 21 days is one month. 63 days is three months. 250 days is one year. I have my cheat sheet, okay? So if I wanna see how it's done in the last three months, I go ahead and put 63. And now it's going to show me during the last three months how it's done. Exxon, look, it did like this, but Abbott Laboratory lately has taken the lead. So you can look at any kind of time period here to see, and you can also just pull this. But look at that green. Look at that green go, baby. Look at that little Abbott Laboratories. What do you know? So really, it's not just the dividend. But here, the price of the share proves that it's worth its metal. I raise my kiss. Age over beauty. Awesome. And then somebody is asking, and this is very valid, in Chartmill, how do you see the industrial sector? Because it, it has other names, but I can't find industrial. And that's not it. just industrial. That is true for many of the sectors. Oh, my gosh. There. I, I agree. And this is what I do. What I had to do to find industrial is I had to, first of all, I knew XLI, right? So I went into Google, Google, and that's the chief muscle that tells you anything you want to know. So what I did is I went into Google, okay, this is how primitive I had to get. I put XLI in there. I swear to you on my son's life, Jonathan, you're okay? All right, no, I, I mean this. This is exactly what I did. And I saw the industrial sector. Now I went down and I went into, where is that little guy? Here, sector spiders. And I go into XLI. This is what I had to do. And then I looked for holdings to find out who has XLI. And I saw, wow, this is how Meli found that company, okay? UNP. But I found out one of these companies. Now I went back to the Mugroso here, like Meli would call it, and I put in there the company at the top. If I can get up there, let me get out of here. 
and I put, let's say, UNP. And then I see how they qualify it. Look at this. This is why we go crazy. Because what is this inside industrials? Sometimes here is going to be under manufacturing. Sometimes it's going to be under transportation, communications, electric, gas, sanitary services, all of those. So they don't make life easy for us. And I, I don't know what to tell you. Industrials is one of those where they just clump. You know, like you're doing your, your, your drawers and you're getting them together. Then you have a miscellaneous because you don't know how to classify it. I don't know about you. When I finish, my miscellaneous is the fullest thing of all because that's, this is what they did with industrials. Anything they throw in the potato room. Awesome. Well, I know there's a few more questions, but sadly, this is the end of our time for today. If you still have questions that you would like answered, you can email us at support at sectorsmadesimple.com. We'll be putting that in chat right now. You can also message us on our Facebook page, Sectors Made Simple. And just to share a little bit of information with you all, these Tuesday classes are typically members only, which means that you need to have a subscription to Sectors Made Simple in order to attend them. However, to celebrate the release of Bullish Percent, we wanted to include everybody in today's session. But if you are interested in subscribing, please visit our website at sectorsmadesimple.com where you can purchase a subscription. But if you're not ready to purchase a subscription or if you'd like more information and want to keep hearing me talk for whatever reason, our Friday webinars at the same time, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, are always available to anybody and everybody who would like to attend. So even if you're not ready to buy the matrix today, I hope that you still can join us for our Friday classes where you can continue learning more about sectors, about point and figure, and about stock investing in general. But for members and for all of the new Girasolas members who have joined us, bienvenidos a todo. We are so happy to have you all here. We hope that we see you all next Tuesday. We will be moving our webinars. We won't be doing the members webinars on Zoom anymore. We'll be doing them on our she website <laughs> on YouTube. The reason is we will be, be we will be bringing these webinars to you in full 1080p HD starting next week. I know many of you have wanted better quality videos, so now you've got it. Starting next Tuesday, you will see all of our members webinars on our webinar page with a countdown to keep you up to date on when the next members webinar is as well as I'll be sending out an email later on this week with instructions on how you don't miss a single thing. Thank you all so much for attending today. It's been such a pleasure to get to share all of this information with you all. Mom, thank you so much for being a part of today's webinar. You're welcome. And you see, you know, being... You're going to show me how you're going to do all those beautiful things that I can do too, okay? Definitely. All we are right. all in this together. Myself, <laughs> my yeah. mom, Vero and all the beta testers, Kira and Nate, we are all very happy that you are all here with us today, that you and will Lily hopefully join us on Friday. And all of this is just an effort to make investing simpler. And Thank not you only that, before you say goodbye, this is your chance to get in on the bottom floor. Okay, this price is not going to be this price. Every time it's going to go up. But if you get in at this price, you will have this price forever. You will be grandfathered at this price. Remember Microsoft? And you say, I wish I had. Te lo dije. So I'm telling you right now. Just saying. Okay. This week was the release of the matrix, or sorry, of BPI on the matrix. Hopefully later on this month, we will have a app for both Apple and Android. So you guys can get all of this information on your phone as well. And that's only the beginning. So I hope everyone is able to join us for the ride. But until then, I will see you all on Friday for, you are for Friday's so free webinar. Thank you all so much for joining us today and for joining us at Sectors Made Simple. Thank Love you all you so much. Take Thank care. you for being so kind to my son. Bye, everybody.